Hi everyone, I'm Dylan Smith. I'm a workshop specialist here at the Birmingham Technology Centre. Today, we're going to be running through the basics of tapping and everything you need to know as a beginner to get started. So the first task we need to do is find out what size our thread is. So we'll conventionally do this by an engineer drawing if it's a customer project, or if it's a project we're doing ourselves, we'll know what size the thread is because we would have modelled it or designed it ourselves. So an example will be an M12 thread by 1.75 pitch. So this means that the outside diameter is 12 millimetres and the pitch is the distance between each thread and that might be 1.75 millimetres. So if we have a screw and we turn it 360 degrees inside of this thread, the screw will move 1.75 millimetres, which is the size of the pitch. Okay, so we've established what size thread we need. We now need to establish what size drill we need to form the thread. We usually do this by an engineer's chart, but this will tell us what size drill we need to form our M12 thread. Another way of doing this is by taking the pitch away from the thread size. So if we take 1.75 away from 12, we have 10.25, which is our drill size. Okay, so if we get out what size drill we need, it's important for us now to figure out what feeds and speeds we need. So the feed rate is determined by the spindle speed, as these work in harmony with each other. Okay, so the feeds and speeds for tapping are like anything else. It all depends on what material you're tapping and what size tap you're using. So we'd always suggest to take the manufacturer's recommendations. Okay, so we figured out our drill size. It's important for us now to figure out our feeds and speeds. The feeds and speeds need to be correct because if the spindle speed is too fast, that'll make our feed rate too fast, therefore potentially breaking our tap. The feed rate is the spindle speed times the pitch. So an example would be, if we tap our hole, which is M12 by 175 millimetres pitch at 100 RPM, the feed rate will be set at 175 millimetres a minute. So we've got our feed and speeds. We now need to consider how deep we're going to drill. Let's assume that our hole is blind, which means it doesn't go all the way through the part. If we've drilled 20 mil, we don't also want to tap 20 mil because the shoulder of the drill will leave some excess material inside of the hole, which could potentially break our tap. So let's assume we can't tap to the full depth. Either our tap's really small, our material is really hard, we're just not sure if it's going to break or not. The trick that we use sometimes is to get a few threads in there. So let's say our tap's M10 by 1.5 millimetres pitch. If we tap on the machine to 6 millimetres deep, that gives us four threads. That's enough to then get a hand tap on it, to then tap to the appropriate depth which is required. So there's different types of taps for different types of holes. The angle at the bottom of the tap determines where the swarf leaves, whether that's by the top, which is more suited for a blind hole, or whether that's by the bottom, which is more suited for a through hole. So we've got three basic kinds of taps. We've got a spore flute, which forces the swarf upwards, as I said, more suited towards blind holes. A spore point, which forces it downwards, suited for through holes. Then a straight flute tap, which is like a one size fits all kind of tap, which works for both. So something which would advise is, if machine tapping on a new machine for the first time, test it in a soft piece of material, for example, a soft resin. Because if you're doing a steel part, and this is the first time you've used the machine tapping, and something goes wrong, it could potentially scrap your part or be detrimental to the machine. So if we don't have a piece of resin to test our machine tapping on, we can do this in fresh air. So why we do this is by putting a wear offset in the length of the tool, or we bring our work coordinate system up higher therefore avoiding our part and just tapping in fresh air. Okay, so we're going to a bit of detail about hand tapping. We'll go more labour intensive than machine tapping. If done correctly, it will give us the same results. So in the basic hand tapping set, we've got three kinds of taps. We've got our starter tap, our secondary tap, and our plug tap. So our starter tap helps us get our hole started. This tap has the most relief in the ends and will help us get a square thread. Our secondary one goes a bit deeper than that and our plug one finally to the bottom of our hole. So something we need to make sure of when hand tapping is making sure that our tap is going in square. So by this we mean our tap's running exactly parallel to our hole. We do this either with a slip gauge or with a set square. Every few increments we check in to make sure that the shaft of our tap's running parallel with our slip gauge or our set square, both from the front and from the side. So once we're sure that our tap's running square, we need to make sure that we're relieving our tap every few increments. So if I turn the tap wrench 180 degrees, I make sure that I relieve it at 180 degrees as well. 
It's just to make sure that our swath doesn't build up inside of our hole and end up snapping our tap. Okay, so now we've got our thread. The final thing to do is to make sure our thread's correct. We do this by using a thread gauge. The one end of our thread gauge is called a no-go. This should go in a maximum of three revolutions. The less, the better though. The other end is a correct thread. This should go in nice and smoothly with no resistance. One thing we need to make sure before testing our thread gauge inside of the hole is to make sure there's no swarf in there because this will hinder how well our thread gauge goes into our hole. So that's it. All the information you need from start to finish to cut a thread, from drilling the hole to measuring the thread. We hope this has been helpful. We'll see you next time. Thank you.